Hi folks, thanks so much for tuning in. My name is Chess and in this video I'm going to talk about what happens when we're disinherited by a really difficult family. Hi folks, welcome back. Thanks so much for being here. As always, I really appreciate your presence. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your comments. And this one might be one of the trickier videos. So I also appreciate your kindness and grace to yourselves. And if there also, if there's something in this video that just doesn't, doesn't work for you, that's okay. I'm joking generally. This is a really, really difficult subject and we can all, there's a lot of emotions involved. And I think that yeah, because of that, it can get, it, it can be, it can be really difficult. So please look after yourself when you're watching this. And if you are dealing with a toxic family, if you are dealing with a narcissistic parent, maybe you have a parent with other mental health problems, it's really challenging. So being kind to ourselves, number one, is the first thing. And if you can, please seek out professional help from a therapist or other support network. That's what they're there for. And so let's get into this subject of being disinherited by difficult families, potentially narcissistic, toxic parents. I'm not saying, by the way, that every parent who disinherits their child is narcissistic or toxic. It just can happen in difficult situations and in difficult families where some people are disinherited. And it could be that those people are not part of the difficult family system and it can get very, very difficult. So I guess in this video I'm really talking about the kind of the scapegoated and the the children that have or oh, have removed themselves or are trying to remove themselves from a difficult family system and from that they basically they're punished they are ostracized they are the consequences are being disinherited so I think this, if this is happening to you, there's a, there's a few things um, to kind of think about um, and I hope this helps. So I think the first thing is that if you're learning that you're being disinherited after a family member has passed away and this is kind of news to you, then it's an especially fragile and difficult and emotional time because you're also dealing with the passing passing away the dying of a difficult family member a, a, a parent who who wasn't there for you wasn't emotionally available wasn't able to do the things that parents should be doing for their children and so in that scenario you're also dealing with really complex grief trying to process the fact that this family member has passed away the fact that the relationship wasn't as you'd hoped the fact that there are so many questions so many unknowns so many what ifs so many shoulds and it's a very 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 complex thing to be dealing with so if that's the situation then i think be even even more careful than all of the other care I was talking about beforehand because it's a very very difficult situation and I think understanding that we're not in our most most we're, we're just not in our best places when we're dealing with that we we're emotional we're vulnerable we're we are sad we are angry we are we're feeling all these things and when we're feeling all those things it's really hard to make good decisions and to be logical and think things through objectively so please i think just being aware and be kind to yourself if that's the situation you're in and giving yourself with that bit of grace to say okay this is actually a really shitty situation and i'm i'm, I'm gonna kind of think about this through that lens as much as i can <music> And so I think there's kind of a couple of parts to this disinheritance thing and, and I want to address the the one like the I guess the pretty obvious one which is the money side of things because that is you know that is 
a big part that's what we're talking about we're, we're talking about somebody not being given um, an inheritance or being given a share a fair share of the inheritance that other family members had or other other siblings had which would normally I guess in in a kind of a I, I shouldn't say normally but but in a kind of in in like a fair distribution where you think that the kids could would get equal kind of shares and things if that hasn't happened then obviously there's a couple of things to be thinking about or also if it hasn't happened or if it looks like it won't be happening actually I'm, I'm gonna back up a second and it could be that you're dealing with a situation where your parent hasn't passed away but is threatening the disinheritance or is talking about it or is telling you it's going to happen and I think that in that scenario, it is, again, really complicated, really unpleasant, but it could be that money is being used to manipulate or to control or to basically show, show favoritism and to really kind of show the power of the person who has the money and is saying, look, I may or may not give it to you. I think being really aware that that's happening and just being really aware of how just completely screwed up that is, <laughs> is a really important thing because that is just toxic as all hell. And if that is the situation that you're dealing with, I hope you can kind of take that step back and, and just think about how the fact is that if we're talking family members and parents and children, like this isn't a relationship that should be for sale. This, this is not about money. This is about love. This is about caring. This is about respect and, and having a human connection. And if it's kind of, I mean, what's the word, dissolved, um, devolved into this conversation about money and, and that's all maybe that is all that the, your parent is is able to kind of wield over you maybe maybe the relationship has got so bad and and you're kind of seeing that what the situation for was it is and, and they've lost controlling power over you maybe that's all they have left and so being really aware that that is not healthy and it's a really really toxic and controlling situation could be called financial abuse again being aware of that um, is a really good thing to happen and there may or may not be legal and other supports available if you are being financially manipulated and financially abused. So that's the kind of financial control and abuse side of things and I'm hoping that that, is, that does apply to less people than more. But it could be that the money isn't, I mean, obviously it's a nice to have but if it's not a need to have for us it can still be used as a way to subtly control or incentivize us in our relationships and again it's still a very toxic and, and dysfunctional way of managing relationships it could also be that we've grown up in a family um, with with these values around money and we're used to a certain amount or we think that we we should have a certain amount or maybe our parents have implied or told us that having a certain amount of money is acceptable and less than is is not is not good enough and so for us it's actually having money and having a certain standard of living and then certain wealth in our lives is a is tied to our self-worth and that's that's a really tricky thing as well because if if our parents are putting value on us because of the things that we have and how we look and, and our and our material possessions to then again kind of threaten that take that away or give more to another family member it really cuts us down in terms of our self-worth our self-esteem and who we are and, and and it's a really challenging thing to to get our heads around if we haven't looked at it before because not only are we dealing with this hang on a minute suddenly my parent is you know not going to provide in the way that I thought maybe I would do or they're not going to provide in the same way that they're going to provide for someone else but it also then reflects negatively on who I am as a person and what that brings me around to is what I think is actually that kind of the key message in this disinheritance piece 
is that really what it is, is it is a tangible, full on, no messing, can't deny it, line in the sand saying, you, you person than I am di disinheriting, you are worth less to me than you thought, than this other person, than I thought I said you were. It's almost like, it, again, it, it puts almost like a, a monetary value on us. And if we are worth less than someone else, then it's, it's almost like, I think, kind of like a rejection. It's like being given a grade in school. It's like, I, you know, all of my siblings got A's and suddenly I'm an F or a D or whatever, you, whatever the grading scheme is. It's actually, Finally, finally, you can put something on paper. You, you have it in black and white that you are not acceptable or as acceptable in your family as other people. And that, I think, is the biggest betrayal. And it is heart-wrenching and it's just, it's a punch in the gut. And it's truly, truly awful awful experience to know that you're just not good enough, not accepted, just not, just not, just not on some level, just not really a part of this family. And it may not be a surprise, it probably isn't a surprise, we, we probably know what we've been dealing with, this toxic mess for so long but it's like the stark reality of it suddenly comes into focus, it becomes crystal clear. And it's like, oh God damn it. It's, it's true. The reality that there are different hierarchies in my family, that there are the favorites and the not favorites. There are the goods and the bads. There are the haves and the have nots. And it could, also be that the people that are the haves, the people that are the favorites, they're the ones, they're all part of it. They could be, they could just be part of the scheme. They could be, they could be the bullies. They could be supporting the narcissistic person. They could be enabling the, the bad behavior. They could be doing all of those things. And often it's the truth tellers and the, the scapegoats and, and the people that don't go along with those things, the people that try and try and support the family in a good and healthy way because they don't buy into the same toxic cycle because they're different. They are the ones that get get punished. And it is it is completely unfair and it is there's no justice. I don't have the words for it because it is just the worst. It is fucking awful. It is terrible. Oh, Jess, okay, thanks for pointing out the obvious there. What do I do? If, if you're in this situation, what's your answers? Um, I'm not going to patronize anyone with any answers. I think this kind of really comes to the crux of dealing with personality disorders, mental illness, really difficult, toxic people. There is no, I, I don't think there exists a happy ending, uh, an answer for everybody. There is no, maybe you have a spiritual belief and there is a God up there who's of some description who's going to smote them with their, their almighty power, maybe, maybe, and I'm, what would I know? What I do know is the answer to this is in, it's not in the money. I'm not saying that you shouldn't pursue the legal avenues that make sense. I'm not saying you shouldn't pursue legal avenues if you have them. I'm not saying you shouldn't try and advocate for, you know, what is right and what is fair. But ultimately, I think the answer is not going to come in a checkbook or in inheriting the house or whatever it may be. The answer is in our hearts and in our souls and in how we move forwards and get to grips with 
why this has happened and what it means. And it's going to mean different things to different people. And what I will say is that I think that understanding that this doesn't reflect who we are and it doesn't reflect love and it doesn't reflect our self-worth and if we can give us that ourselves that love and that 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 worth then that's the way to counteract the fact that we can't get it from someone else i'd love to hear what you think and again please if you are in this situation please be very very gentle with yourself and take things as as kindly as you can please leave me a comment let me know what you think and i will talk to you soon take care my friends bye for now Thank you.